For DTD entities, there is new language support for validation, completion, hover, go to definition, and a new quick fix. In this file, we are declaring a new entity called local with the value of value from file XML, the name of this file. So once I hover over local, we do get information about it, the value, the file it's from. So this file is bounded to base DTD, separate file. Once we go there, we do declare this external entity with new value, value from base DTD. So the hover also works for entities from different files, as you can see. Same goes for completion. So once I just hit the ampersand, I do get local, external, and some predefined entities as well, like the greater than, less than, quotation. There's also go to definition. So holding control and clicking on the entity will take you to the definition. Also works for the external file. If you're using an entity that has not been declared, you can see there's an error message saying that it hasn't been declared and a quick fix that goes along with it. It declares the entity in this current file. There is a new setting called XML preferences show schema documentation type, which dictates what kind of documentation you would like to see coming from your XSD file. So by default, this is going to be set to all, but you can set it to documentation, app info, or none. So to demonstrate, I will go into schema.xsd and you can see that we have this element with three documentation elements and three app info elements. So going into the file.xml, which is bounded to the schema, we'll see that once we hover over element, we do see all. So we do see documentation and app info. So once we set it to documentation, we'll just see documentation. And of course, you will see this documentation during completion as well. XML format empty elements is a new setting that determines how empty elements should be formatted. By default, it's set to ignore, but you can set it to collapse or expand. In this file, there are two empty elements, foo and bar, and bar has a self-closing tag. Once I format this document, there will be no changes because the setting has been set to ignore. If I set the setting to collapse, in this case, foo will collapse into a self-closing tag once I format. If I set the setting to expand, since bar has a self-closing tag, it will expand to have a separate end tag. The setting XML preferences quote style determines what kind of quotes, single or double quotes, should be used for completion. By default, it's set to double, but you can set it to single. I'll set it to single, go to my file, and to demonstrate, I will just do completion on the attribute value. And as you can see, single quotes are being used. There's another new setting called XML format enforce quote style, which determines whether or not you should use the preferred quote style when formatting. So by default, it's set to ignore. So if I set it to ignore and format this document, it's not going to replace my double quotes with single quotes. Once I set it to preferred, then it's going to use the preferred quote style when formatting. So we, can, we should see that the single quotes, or the double quotes rather over here, turn into single quotes once I format. In XML schema documents, the schema location for both the XS include and XS import tags is now a document link. In this XML schema file, we make reference to two others XML schemas. For the first reference, we use the XS include element. For the second reference, we use the XS import element. We can control click on the schema location attribute in order to open the corresponding schema. This release also saw the addition of a document link for the XML model preprocessing instruction. The href attribute of the XML model preprocessing instruction can now be control clicked in order to navigate to the corresponding document. There are now schema-related language features coming from an XSD file or DTD file bounded using XML model. In this case, we are bounded with grammar.xsd. It's a very simple schema file with just one element called from XSD and some documentation about it. You can see that if we don't have any element here, we do get an error message. So we do have validation saying that we expect that element from XSD. We do get completion as well from XSD with the documentation. If we hover over it, we do get the documentation too. 
Also, if the name of this element was wrong, we do get an error message about that. There is also go to type definition. Once I right click, go to type definition, it will take me to the grammar.xsd file. This feature also works when we use XML model to bind to a DTD file. This DTD file is likewise very simple, just has one element called from DTD and some documentation about it. Going back, we do get completion options, so we do get from DTD and its documentation. We do get hover, and we do get validation as well. There are new XML snippets to make it easier to get started with an empty XML file. If I open a start tag, I do get presented with lots of snippets, ranging from just inserting a comment, inserting an XML declaration, or inserting new XML with doc types in various different forms. So for now, I'll just insert an XML declaration. These snippets, they depend on the context. So right now, because I already have an XML declaration, if I do that once more, you'll see that in these snippets, we don't get an XML declaration snippet again. One of the goals of these snippets was to make it easier to bind to an existing schema. In this case, we do have XML model schemas bound to a placeholder schema, file DTD. And we do see a lot of these placeholder schemas in these snippets, like file SSD and file DTD. And last but not least, if you start typing schema location or no namespace schema location, you will be presented with snippets to help you bind to a schema using that particular method. So for now, I'll try schema location. For performance reasons, there is a configurable limit for the number of document symbols that could appear at any given time in the document outline. By default, this limit is set to 5000 items, and for a small file like this one, this limit won't make a difference. But for files like file XML, which has 6,000 elements, since the limit has been surpassed, there will be a notification informing you about it. In the document outline, we can see that computation has stopped at the 5,000th element. To configure the limit, you can just click on this button, which will take you to the VS Code settings. For now, I will change the limit to 6,000 so that we can compute everything. Once I open file XML once more, we can see that we no longer get a notification, and in the document outline, we do get the last element computed.